Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I have the Honor X7B with me. Let's give it a full review. Let's get started. This device is part of the mid-range and has very tough competitors. Its launch price has been 5,999 pesos in Mexico. I insist that it has very tough competitors. So next let's get to know what it can offer us. Generally I feel that Honor is not a brand that is characterized by giving very tight or competitive prices, but one of its main strengths will be its 256 gigabyte storage. Fortunately, although Honor does not handle such tight prices, what it does handle is a very extensive distribution. So in Mexico it will be very easy to get them, I suppose the same will be true in other parts of the world. With telephone companies, in department stores, in online stores, in the official Honor store. So the distribution is very wide and that could be one of its main strengths. Come with me to know it. Let's start by taking a look at the front where we find a design that does have reduced bezels. The bottom one is a bit larger unlike its big brother the Honor X8B which has even smaller bezels. In fact in this model we will also not find the same resistant glass that we find in its big brother. So if you feel a trimmed experience in this aspect we could not say that it is a drop resistant device. At the top we find a microphone and a light sensor, not to be confused with infrared that controls electronic devices since in this case it is only a light sensor a little strange in order to save some space on the front bezel. On the left side is placed the tray, where you can have a nano sim card and also a micro SD card up to 1 terabyte. On the bottom side will be placed the headphone jack, another microphone, a USB-C port and the speaker. Finally, on the right side we have the power button which at the same time is a fingerprint reader and also the volume buttons. In this case it is a device that has a thickness of 8.24 millimeters and its weight is 199 grams. So it has average specifications and in this case I have the addition that is called silver breeze color but it is also in emerald green color. In this case this addition has a rather nice pattern on this back cover which is sometimes hard to show through the camera but it looks like feathers floating with a projection of different colors. Truth be told it's a nice looking cover even though it's totally reflective. However since it's a fairly light color you don't get to make out finger smudges or anything like that so it's a nice design like many honor devices but in this case it also doesn't have any certification against splashes or anything like that so in endurance it might fall short a little bit. The screen is large and that will be a plus point. It also has a good resolution of 1080 by 2412 which together with this 6.8 inch screen would give a density of 388. So we have a screen with a very good level of detail, although the technology is simple because we're only talking about a TFT panel. So it has viewing angles that are not that good. As you will notice when you rotate the device it can lose some brightness. Although within the TFT screens I think this one is not that bad compared to others that are used in lower ranges. But definitely if you find another device with OLED screen you are going to feel that it looks much better. In this case if you view the content from the front you're going to have a good experience. But if you view it from the side, that's when you might get a bit paler colors and not as much brightness. In fact, the maximum brightness, even when viewed from the front, is 850 nits. So for outdoors, it might fall a little bit short. Although for indoors, it really is a very bright display. It's also going to offer us 90 hertz in its refresh rate. So, yes, it can show us fluid movements. Overall, then, we could say that it is a screen that meets halfway, but it is not so spectacular in contrast and color intensity. Fortunately it does come with good visual rest modes and reading modes for more comfortable use in certain scenarios. And you can also adjust the color if you want colors a bit more saturated or on the normal setting. However, being a display that doesn't have AMOLED technology, it doesn't offer such vibrant colors anyway. So you're almost always going to have it on the vivid setting for a slightly more advanced experience. So I think the TFT technology might be a point that works against it, although the rest of the screen specs are fine. Interestingly, this device is one of the few from Honor that does offer stereo sound. So it offers a main audio output at the bottom and a secondary audio output in the earpiece area for calls. 
Only that the secondary speaker has a much lower power compared against the main speaker, so it's not a symmetrical sound. And also, overall it's a sound that emphasizes the mid frequencies a lot, so it doesn't sound that high quality, although it does sound very powerful. Let's listen to a small test. Although remember that it's not the same to listen to it live. In fact, we could say that the headphone area for calls has a little bit more prominent treble and the lower area has a little bit less prominent treble. So overall, that's the sound experience, which I insist is not the most remarkable thing. But if you got to notice, it also offers a high gain with the 200% volume mode, which I don't think is an appropriate name, but it does get to increase the power of the sound even more. In the sound software could still improve because although it does have a special section to improve the sound, it is not available if you do not have headphones connected. So to access this Honor Histon option, you need that accessory. And in this case, it already gives us some surround sound presets. We can also choose some headphone format we are using and also an equalizer available with some presets and also 10 bands to, in a specific way, configure our sound plus a bass amplifier. I would love to be able to use this equalizer in the setting without the headphones so that I could improve my sound experience with the speakers, but it's not possible. It also doesn't have Dolby Atmos, so it feels a bit plain in the sound software. The good thing is that it does have a headphone jack, as you saw a moment ago, and something I found very noteworthy is the support it has for Bluetooth audio codecs. This could be a strong point, as it supports APTX, which is a codec that will give you higher resolution with compatible headphones, but it also supports the LDAC codec, which could give you even higher resolution audio with compatible Bluetooth headphones. It only integrates two microphones, one on the top and one on the bottom, so you're left with what you need for stereo sound recording. Below, we will listen to a test recorded with these microphones. Esta es una prueba de micrófonos de Honor X7B utilizando la aplicación de grabadora de voz del sistema. I think the microphones have good quality to pick up voice as well. Then I will record a video pointing to my sound system at maximum volume to see if the audio is saturated through these microphones. It doesn't seem to have a problem with the volume being too high. On the contrary, when the volume is quite low, it could become more distorted audio for some strange reason. The front camera is 8 megapixels with f2.0 aperture and fixed focus. There is no gesture or quick action to open the camera, so it must necessarily be from the lock screen. When switching to the front camera, it automatically enters portrait mode, so you have to pay close attention if the bokeh effect is enabled or disabled because it could give you unwanted pictures. The capture speed is not very remarkable and it doesn't have a burst available in this mode either. Also, you are going to have the easy gesture for a capture when the shutter is a bit far away. In fact, in the settings you could also enable a floating shutter in case you want to have it a bit closer to take the picture by tapping on the screen. Or it also has the smile capture, although I don't recommend it too much. And in addition to the bokeh effect, the portrait mode has a beauty mode, which only has one slider, so you can't configure it by individual parameters like on other devices. Selfies do look with a good level of detail, the sensor resolution is well exploited, although it is obviously not a very high quality photo because noise will appear even in well-lit scenarios. But that's getting pretty detailed. I think at this price point we can accept this as a positive result. The camera has fixed focus so if you're too close to it you might come out slightly out of focus and it's also not a wide enough camera to take group shots easily. Indoors the result is definitely not good. You will even notice some burnt out areas, poorly defined shadow areas and quite a lot of noise. So it is not recommended to take pictures in these environments. In backlight, the preview does not 
not look optimized, but it does have automatic HDR, so after taking the picture, it processes it well. It seems to me that in this case, it lit the sky well. We see a good balance of highlights and shadows. It's not a photograph that I would consider spectacular, but overall, I think the result is positive for this price range. At night, you will also notice that it doesn't have too much quality due to what I mentioned a moment ago in the interior photographs. We don't have as much definition in the darker areas and the areas that are a little bit illuminated become a little overexposed. In addition, the color saturation is not good. And although you can take portrait pictures at night, again, it is not so recommended because of the low definition and overexposed areas that can be generated in the background. But in the daytime, portraits with the front camera seem very positive to me. Note how in this case we have a good foreground focus and the curious thing is that it did detect this object, which was also a fairly complex object and it detected it practically in its entirety. Not with 100% accuracy, but believe me, the result is very positive. These front camera portraits in the daytime are very good, so I would think this could be a strong point. On the back we will have the ultra wide camera of 14 millimeters with 5 megapixels aperture f2.2 and fixed focus then the 24 millimeter main camera with 108 megapixels on its sensor and f1.75 aperture plus autofocus and the third camera is just a macro camera which i don't pay much attention to you'll see the results later photos in auto mode come out at 12 megapixels if you want a high resolution picture you have to enter the specific mode and in this case the photography is actually quite slow it doesn't feel like a very agile capture and if you hold down the shutter you can take a burst of up to a hundred pictures but in order to access the burst the artificial intelligence must be disabled so in addition the burst will be quite slow so the experience doesn't look very good in this aspect at the top you have a button to access some filters which we can't display in real time simultaneously all of them if we tap on screen we can adjust the exposure and focus but we can also access a much more advanced pro mode where we can regulate other things like the type of metering the iso which can go up to 6400 also the shutter speed which can go up to eight seconds exposure compensation focus white balance so it has a good pro mode but it doesn't allow raw photo capture for more advanced post development Regarding intelligent capture, documents cannot be scanned from the automatic mode, but fortunately it does have a special mode for automatic capture and cropping of these sheets. Fortunately in this case, it also has different color effects to make the scan look different, whether you want it to look like a photograph or as if it had been passed through a specific scanner. In addition, you can export this capture to PDF in a very easy way. This is what I like the most about this device possibly. On the other hand, to scan QR codes, you can't use the automatic mode either, but there is a button in the upper left corner to access this specific scanner with which you can do this action. To start describing the results, let me show you the 108 megapixel camera, which I honestly feel doesn't really take advantage of this resolution. Yes, you can get to do some cropping to still maintain good quality, but compared to other 108 megapixel pictures I've seen, this one doesn't seem to have as much detail. The pictures will be 12 megapixels in auto mode, and in the case of motion pictures, you might get a little swept out of the picture, so it's not that spectacular in this high motion capture. As you notice, the ultra wide camera has two strange colors that don't look like the real thing. So the ultra wide camera definitely didn't appeal to me, also it has a lot of noise and being only 5 megapixels it has low definition. Here we're looking at another picture with the main camera to try to notice a little bit more detail and if we were to get really picky we would also see some small distortions that can be generated by the lens at the edges. So it's not a high end camera but definitely at the price we can't get too picky either. And now you have the picture of the ultra wide camera so again you notice how they are here full of artifacts a lot of noise chromatic aberration so the ultra wide camera definitely does look bad indoors where the light is not so intense curiously i like the result much better we have well represented colors and the darker areas do not have exaggerated noise either with the ultra wide camera the performance remains the same much paler colors much more noise and little definition in backlit situations the preview does not look optimized but after taking the picture it does manage to balance highlights and shadows well having a highlight area that doesn't look overexposed and the shadow area that also looks very well lit. So I definitely like this photograph although it's not free of mistakes obviously. Here you'll notice a bit of a ghosting effect because the object was in motion. 
So you do need to have static objects in this type of photograph for a better result. The ultra wide camera also performs well in backlight and at night the main camera is not able to balance highlights and shadows well but it does a good job of handling noise and color saturation. However if you use the night mode notice how it does a better job of balancing highlights and shadows giving quite an attractive result and it has even better noise handling and raises the level of detail. So it is highly recommended to use the night mode and I really like the pictures here. Look at this result with the ultra wide camera where we will notice even more noise around the darker areas and poor light balance. And unfortunately with the ultra wide camera we can't use the night mode. The funny thing is that it does let you use night mode even when using zoom 2x. So look at the difference between not using it where we see very burned out highlights and using it where we see perfect balance, better saturation and good color management. And in the darker areas either way the camera performs well. Areas that are completely in darkness don't come out with noise which is much appreciated. So night photography I did like on this device. Although not with the ultra wide camera as you can confirm in this other picture. And note, in this kind of conditions where it's practically penumbra, the preview can't even show anything. The photograph with auto mode doesn't show anything either, but with night mode, notice how it manages to collect quite a bit of illumination. Consider that it was an extremely dark scene, and it definitely stands out that in night mode you can collect this amount of light. The maximum zoom you can use on this device is 8x, but it's definitely a very forced 8x. It looks very artificial, the stretched image. It looks very artificial stretched image, so it doesn't seem to take advantage of the 108 megapixel sensor that it has. The zoom will be very simple and I think a weak point. The camera does allow you to focus on close objects, so you have a good level of detail, although by the very nature of the lens and sensor, you might have a little less even focus than I would like. For example, on this object, on the eyes, it doesn't give you a good focus because they're a little bit closer. That's a normal thing in photography, but notice how you can get excellent detail in the textures for this macro shot. Even if you apply digital zoom, you can still get a good photograph with 2x zoom. Look at the result the macro camera can give you. For me the result of the main camera is much much better because in this case the color is very poor. It also has a shallow depth of field and although you can get closer I feel that you can't really get much more detail with that camera. If you don't really like the ultra wide camera shots but want to have more space in your picture you could use the panorama mode and the colors are definitely much better. We have better definition. So it's highly recommended to use this panorama mode which also merges the pictures well. You don't notice the stitching between them. Although the dynamic range is not so high so there may be some slightly overexposed areas but it is a positive experience with the panorama mode. And for portrait photography note how the result is positive even without a depth camera confirming that these cameras are unnecessary. Perhaps it is supported by the ultra wide camera because it does manage to detect with sufficient quality the objects that are in the foreground blurring the background. So portraits I think come out well. In fact I like that you can also select the 2x zoom setting still maintaining good picture quality although the detection is still very similar to what we've seen before. But I think for a good number of people this photograph will come out very well. Video recording is basic as it allows us to record in full HD at 30 frames per second in the rear cameras and also the front camera. The good news is that the ultra wide camera is present in this resolution, but it cannot record at 60 frames per second, so it may fall short in this regard. While you are recording, you can take pictures, pause and resume your recording and even turn the flashlight on or off without the need to cut the recording at any time. What you can't do is rotate to the front camera without first stopping your video recording. In the bottom right corner we are going to see a beauty mode selector which does support full HD recording so that can become a standout feature. It doesn't offer a pro mode but it does offer a two view recording mode which we'll talk about later. The video is possibly one of its weakest points not only because it is in full HD but because we immediately realize that it has no stabilization and that we are not walking yet. So you see a video that is not of high quality. Fortunately the colors are fine with the main camera but with the ultra wide camera are two cold colors. Very inaccurate with what is in reality and obviously if you record with the ultra wide camera the video quality will be totally inferior. By the way, this device doesn't allow you to switch between the ultra wide camera and the main camera while recording and the zoom is very bad. 
even worse than photography, so it's not going to be something you're going to enjoy. Indoors, the main camera, I think it fares well, reducing enough noise in the darker areas, although the color seems to me to lose a bit of accuracy, giving a slightly greenish hue. On the other hand, the ultra wide camera is a complete disaster in this type of scenario. It looks very low definition and it is definitely a scene full of noise. In backlit conditions, it will give priority to illuminate the face, which is what one would expect in a device of this price. So in this case, we can't reproach it too much, but it is clear that it is advisable to record with the light from the front and not the light behind. The ultra wide camera will have exactly the same result with the strange colors that we had already been seeing throughout this review. At night, the main camera again shows good performance, just as we saw in photography, so it handles noise well. You see good quality video, although obviously in the video it's not able to balance highlights and shadows as we saw in the photograph. But even in the darker scenes, we're gonna see that it handles noise well, although it's not able to collect a lot of light. And as I had anticipated you a moment ago, it doesn't have stabilization even digitally, so even when you're walking, you see a lot of movement, and when you're running, it's obviously going to be a mess, not only with the main camera but also with the ultra wide camera so it's definitely not a tool I would recommend for anyone who wants to create video content. It also integrates a fast motion mode but it is definitely of very low quality. It's at an exaggeratedly low bit rate so notice how by pausing the video at any frame you see an extremely pixelated image so it's very poor quality. Also it's an automatic speed setting so it doesn't allow you to manually set how fast you want it to go. And it offers slow motion but very basic in HD at a few inches per second, confirming that you definitely won't be a video expert. On a positive note though, it does handle focus well, both with people and objects, so I think it's okay, although it's not able to generate a very aggressive blur effect. With the front facing camera we'll also have full HD video quality, although it actually goes at 24 frames per second, so the movement doesn't get to feel as fluid. And definitely the fact that it does not have stabilization plays against it, in addition to the fact that backlighting will be a complete disaster, although that result was expected in this price range. However, this front camera is not going to stand out in any aspect. In fact, indoors you will also notice a very simple video quality which I think is not quite according to the price at which this device is being distributed in Mexico. If you find it much cheaper, maybe we can forgive this kind of video quality. At night, it is also going to behave in a very simple way. We have low detail and low color saturation, plus it can overexpose some areas that are a little more illuminated. So it's definitely not going to be a device that I would recommend for video recording. Especially in much more challenging areas, it is going to suffer too much, although this was to be expected in its price range. However, we even see some alterations in the white balance. So just to finish, I tell you that it does have fast camera on the front camera. Although as in the rear camera, it goes at a very low bit rate. Therefore, the result is very pixelated. And although we will not have slow motion, what we do find is the dual view mode, which I love that devices have it. In this case, it also allows you to zoom while you are recording in this mode. It integrates by default the split screen mode, but you could also switch to a picture in picture mode, where it also lets you move this floating frame so you can adjust it to the position you want. I really like the result of this dual camera a lot. Although the resolution is not very high, it is just a little above HD and goes at 24 frames per second. So it's not that advanced recording, but for the price, I think it's very good. This could be a strong point. The operating system built into this device is Magic OS in its version 7.2 edition. This system runs on Android 13, so it still doesn't come with the latest, but I think we can still forgive it for not coming with Android 14. It is still a very new operating system. What we find hard to forgive them is that they do not offer a clear update policy so that the user knows for sure how many updates they will receive. Possibly it will receive Android 14, but I don't think it will receive more. The manufacturer adds some additional options. For example, we have this sidebar that can show us quick shortcuts to applications. These applications will open in a floating window mode that we can resize and reposition wherever we want. In fact, we can also minimize if we move it to the upper right corner. We will also be able to open other applications, although we can only open one application at a time in this floating format. The rest of the applications will be minimized in this small dock that will be created on the side. 
Something to note is that YouTube does support this floating mode as does Instagram and of course also Telegram, WhatsApp and other applications that may become common. So it has good compatibility with this floating windows mode. The only thing that didn't end up convincing me is that you can't open more than one app in this format. You can only open one at a time. We will also find Yo-Yo Suggestions, which is a special widget with Honor's artificial intelligence where it will suggest shortcuts to applications that you usually use at certain times of the day. For example, if in the morning you usually open YouTube, the suggested icon will appear here at that time. And if in the evening you usually use WhatsApp a lot, you will also see the suggestion here. In fact, in the quick settings, it also shows you some suggestions on the top right. So I think it gives us good artificial intelligence tools to suggest things to you and not just to be waiting for you to control it. Within the photo gallery, we are also going to find interesting options. For example, you can select several photos and create a collage. It comes with several grids. Obviously, you don't need to make any extra payment or subscription to use this kind of features. And likewise, you could create a video by simply choosing some elements here and clicking on the create new video button. So it does include a video editor without any watermark and this can be useful when you are creating content since you don't need to buy another application or pay any other application subscription. As you can see, it is a fairly stable operating system that offers good options, although it is not the operating system that offers more options today, but I think they are enough for a good number of users. It should also be said that it has an attic motor on the Z axis. So it is a simple vibration that will not have an advanced interaction when you are browsing the system. In the security section, Honor also offers several options. For starters, let me tell you that it has a side fingerprint reader that is quite fast. As you can see, just put your finger on and off and it unlocks quickly. It supports up to five registrations with this reader. It also has facial unlocking, although it is in two dimensions, so it is not so recommended if your priority is security. Just use it for a slightly more comfortable experience. But speaking of convenience, you can use the smart unlock through Google that allows you to select or configure trusted environments. It can be some location or some Bluetooth device so that while you're in that environment, it's not constantly locking your screen. You're also going to notice that it has Honor's password manager. So yes, it is synced with the cloud, although you have to enable this option because it's not enabled out of the box. I wish it came with all of this already turned on so that the user who isn't as experienced can enjoy these features. But once you turn it on, it can also sync with your Honor tablet so they share passwords and you can quickly fill out forms. In some part, the fact that Honor has its own password manager makes it look like a much stronger brand that doesn't rely so much on Google, unlike many other manufacturers that rely 100% on Google's password manager. So notice how in this case, it's automatically going to ask me for fingerprint verification before filling in these fields, so it works correctly. It also includes the option of blocking applications so that you can determine which applications you must re-verify your identity before you are allowed access. It also has the save so you can safely store files. What it does not integrate is the kids mode. So it would not be so easy to have some time limit when lending your cell phone to a little one. But it does integrate an option to block fake mobile towers. In fact, this option comes by default and with this Honor somehow helps you to prevent them from stealing any information. And speaking of protection, it also integrates in addition to Google Prey Protect, which all Android phones have, in the security application, a malware scanner, in collaboration with TrustLock. So it comes with a good level of protection. And within the application settings, you will also find the Twin App option, with which you can clone applications to use two instances on the same cell phone. And if you happen to lose your phone, then you will depend solely on Google since Honor does not yet have an implementation to find your lost phone or block it. So this Google implementation is not yet very robust. Therefore, if you do lose it, you don't have much hope of finding it. But the option is here. And like all Android, it also has the digital wellness features where you can see statistics of your app consumption and also manage your kids' devices to set some usage limits for them. And finally, you can also press the power button five times to access an emergency call. 
The battery is 5330 milliampers. Sounds like a really big battery, although the processor might not be that efficient. So, you know, in my tests, I run this drainer in the foreground and that would give me about 4 hours and 16 minutes running in the foreground. In other words, in very demanding tasks, the processor can get to spend a lot of power. But obviously, in this case, it is an extremely demanding task. On the contrary, having this drainer running in the background while we do other things, Honor confirms us that it has an excellent battery management since in that case it came to give me 11 hours with 46 minutes, so it's definitely an expert at managing apps, so I would recommend that you leave all apps with automatic management. But anyway, if you're having any complications with apps not sending you notifications or anything like that, you could manually manage this to tell it to keep everything in the background, but trust me, it does very good battery management on this device on apps running in the background. In addition, it has a power saving mode that can also help you extend this time, but it does not have an ultra saving mode that could help you in emergencies as the vast majority of cell phones do. The 35 watt charger is included in the box and charges in a good amount of time. With 15 minutes it recovered 22%, with 30 minutes it recovered 45% and the full charge finished in 81 minutes which isn't the most spectacular in the range but definitely doesn't disappoint. It does help well with fast charging and to take care of the battery life it has smart charging so if you leave it charging overnight it will charge much slower so as not to damage the battery. And it also has an option called intelligent battery capacity which will not use the battery to the maximum. That is to say, if it is 5330 milliampers, you might actually use only 5200. This is so that the battery will have a much longer lifespan. But if you don't want to have these options, you can disable them perfectly well. In connectivity, it is not so advanced. I honestly wish it did have support for 5G networks, but in this case it's left with support for 4G networks only. Fortunately, through the System Manager app, you can specify which apps will have access to the network through your mobile data or which apps can only access the internet using Wi-Fi. So, you can specifically determine the control of your mobile data. And while I'm on the subject of Wi-Fi, in this case it supports Wi-Fi 5 networks, so it doesn't have very good speed support, it doesn't have very high download speeds, it falls a little short in this section, although it's not a totally bad thing. But in Bluetooth it also falls a little short having version 5.0, and this is because it has a slightly old processor, we will talk about the processor later, but connectivity is also affected by this decision. The device also doesn't integrate NFC, as most of its competitors do, but it does have support for FM radio, although you obviously need to connect headphones for it to work. You can also use the USB port to connect accessories, as it supports OTG. Its screen projection can be wireless only and is a mirror-like projection. It does not offer any additional options as we might see in other manufacturers. It will also feature Android Auto to connect to your vehicle's screen seamlessly. And with respect to sensors, it should be noted that it does not have a gyroscope. And it does have a proximity sensor, but it is totally virtual, so it could end up presenting some inconveniences. It is enabled exclusively when you bring your ear close to this area. And as I told you, the light sensor has a bit of an odd placement at the top. Now let's talk about the ecosystem, because in the case of Honor it does have a very extensive ecosystem since you can connect good devices around it. For example, they have the Magic Book, in the case of laptops. We will also find wearables such as the Honor Watch, Honor Band and other models. In tablets they also have the Honor Pad X, Honor Pad and in other regions they may have even more devices. So it is a fairly complete ecosystem that does have good interaction between them. However, in this case it does not have the Honor Connect function, which would allow us a more advanced interaction from the smartphone to the computer. What it does integrate is Honor Share, so you could send and receive files easily and quickly with other devices of the same brand. But being part of Android, they also have the open ecosystem, so they also have Quick Share to be able to send and receive files with other Android devices. And although Honor also has its own headphones that can be discovered simply by opening the cover, by also having Google Fast Pair, notice how headphones from other brands that integrate this same technology could also be discovered by this device. As you can see, the window appears and I can easily connect to them. 
Regarding cloud storage, Honor relies on Google as it does not currently offer its Honor Cloud. It only offers basic data syncing of your notes, calendar, Wi-Fi networks, and your passwords. Hopefully in the future, they can offer their own cloud storage or some more advanced integration with a partner, since from the system gallery, you can't sync to any other service. And regarding the control of home devices, it does not come with Google Home installed and Honor does not have an application developed by themselves so you can control your lights, your air conditioning or something similar. So in this section also still feels that Honor could improve. Let's talk about performance. It has the Snapdragon 680 with 8GB of RAM and another 8 virtual gigabytes with Turbo RAM. In a moment, we're going to test that Turbo RAM that we've already tested on other models with good sensations. It took 4.25 seconds to open each of these applications. Honestly, it didn't do too badly. But we couldn't say it's an extremely fast performance either. It's not going to stand out for its good RAM management. Notice how despite the fact that we have several applications open, the device actually keeps running all of them and we will also see that it does not take so long to switch back and forth between one application and another. Possibly the animations are not as fast in the system and that may cause you to need to tap several times to switch between apps, but that's due to the animation of the device. So if you simply wait for the animation to finish, you will notice that it does allow you to switch between all the applications without noticing any problems. Notice how we could also get to switch between applications by doing this gesture and the applications remain running. So the RAM memory is very well used with that Turbo RAM of Honor. That's a very strong point since other competitors even with more RAM could get to restart applications. And once you're inside the apps, notice how the navigation can become fluid. Honestly, I was expecting a lower performance than what we are seeing right now since as I had anticipated you, this device has a bit old processor, but it seems to be well optimized and actually the performance doesn't look as bad as one would expect. Let's do another test now by exporting a video with a total duration of one minute with clips recorded from this device in full HD and let's see how long it takes. It took about 36 seconds or so, I honestly think that's a good time, so even though it won't be the most powerful in its range or in that price range, it doesn't quite disappoint either. But obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, one of its strongest points will be the storage because it has 256 gigabytes and you can also put in a card up to a terabyte, so you can definitely have plenty of space to store your photos and videos without the DVs filling up easily, in fact it is a capacity that was previously only seen in the high end so it stands out that from this model we have all this storage capacity and although Honor does not share officially what is the version of the storage I could tell you that they do have a good read and write speed because you do not feel when exporting video or open applications that the device goes with an exaggerated slowness. With respect to the games, it is curious that it does not offer us a direct access to its manager application, but within the application settings we can access the game manager, in this case the games we have installed up here, or we can manually add some other games so that when we open these games more options appear. As you can notice when you open it, immediately tells us that additional options are being enabled and in this case we have a sidebar from which we can open applications to answer a message without having to leave our game or we can also have here a game profile or a balanced profile depending on how much you want your battery is consumed. We also have brightness control and we can enable a do not disturb button quickly to avoid distractions while we are playing and you can also disable gestures or touches across the screen that could affect your game. You can also take screenshots or screen recordings but it does not offer us a frames per second counter or some other more advanced features that other manufacturers do offer us for games. In the case of Call of Duty this device loads us the average graphic quality at an average frame rate, however it also lets us go up to a very high quality and if we go up to a high rate it will lower the graphic quality so we are going to play in the very high quality at an average rate and notice that it does support all these effects practically all at the same time although honestly it should not support these effects since it is not that powerful but it does have good compatibility. So with this configuration honestly the experience was pretty bad, it wasn't able to go to a frame rate, it wasn't able to give the very bad responses, so the proper thing to do will be to play at a much lower quality. 
Definitely that with this very high quality, the processor is not able to give you a smooth experience. The ideal will be to select the low graphic quality if you want to maintain good fluidity. Although fortunately it stays very cool so you are not going to feel at any time heat with this device. In the Legends game we changed the automatic setting to a medium detail setting with 60 frames per second according to its price. And in this case it seems that the game goes well enough, although there comes a time when after a little while the processor power becomes a little more limited and starts to lock up a little bit more, it cannot get to maintain a completely stable fluidity when playing. So if your priority is gaming, I would definitely recommend looking for another model, but on the other hand, if you play much simpler content or only in two dimensions, you will not feel any loss of power since in this case the games we are testing are a little more demanding. So you can definitely find something better. Here the positive thing we can highlight is that it did not get hot. In the Spongebob game, by default it has the high resolution and quality, but to put a test according to its price we selected the medium resolution and quality at 60 frames per second. And although there was a moment where it did reach up to 60 frames per second, in reality in general its average was 35, so it maintains a good experience but nothing super fluid. So it is not a device that is totally focused on those who like to enjoy the maximum fluid and graphical experience in games, but for ordinary users it could become a device that will give you an acceptable gaming experience. But again, if your priority is gaming, you will have better options. Finally, in Henshin Impact, by default the quality is set to low and we're going to leave it there, but we're going to go up to 60 frames per second to see what it's capable of without enabling motion blur. In this case, even though we selected 60 frames per second, the device wasn't able to go up to that much, but it looks like its management is good because it did maintain regular stability. I think that within reason its performance does have decent fluidity across multiple gaming content so it's not a device that's going to let you down or freeze up completely in the gaming department. But let me stress again that if your priority is gaming and you want to enjoy a much more advanced experience, you will find other options at this price. Although at this price you won't find many options with too much additional power. You yourself are seeing that even recording the screen can maintain a good performance as long as you choose the low graphics quality because it goes according to its price. In conclusion we could say that it is a balanced device although I feel that this can also affect it because it does not stand out in many points. Perhaps the highlights are its storage and turbo RAM but other than that I think it remains as an average device. For the moment we have reached the end of this video I hope you liked it. If you did you know you can tell us and we'll see you next time.